morning and welcome to St. Richard's Episcopal Church this 13th Sunday after the day of Pentecost. I'm Allison Harry, the rector here at St. Richard's Episcopal Church in Winter Park, Florida. The bulletin for today's service is in a link on, your fa on our Facebook page where you're watching us live. And it was also sent to the e-news on Thursday and you can find it on our website, www.strichards.org. We continue our service this morning with our opening hymn, We Are Standing on Holy Ground, found on page two of your service bulletin.
first reading today is from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. He said to him, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come, come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring up my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to, to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Sing praises to him, 
and speak of all his marvelous works. His love, his love, his love is everlasting. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength, continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, his love, his love, his love is everlasting. Israel came into Egypt. And Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people. They they dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen, Alleluia. His love, his love, his love. genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is hymn number 675 in the hymnal 1982. 
Take up your cross, the Savior said, on page six of our service bulletin as well. to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become a follower of mine, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who want to lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, 
and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Namaste. We are truly, even in a pandemic, standing on holy ground with angels all around us. Allow me to paraphrase Jesus from today's gospel. If you want to follow me, deny yourself and take up your cross. It's not about saving your life. It is about finding your life in me. It's not about gaining even the whole world. It is about finding your life in me. What in the heck does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Well, all the answers are in today's readings. So let's take a look at Moses, Peter, even Jesus, and then let St. Paul fill in the blanks for you and for me. In today's Old Testament reading, Moses is on the lamb, hiding out with his father-in-law Jethro after killing an Egyptian and fleeing to the desert. Tending Jethro's flock, Moses comes to Horeb, the mountain of God. He consciously decides to investigate what appears to be a perpetually burning bush, and God has him. Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God has a job for Moses. God has observed the misery of his people, Israel, and he wants to deliver them from the Egyptians to a land flowing with milk and honey. We all know the story. But today, the issue is Moses seeing and hearing God's call to follow him and immediately knowing he is not up to the task. Ever felt that way? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God's response is simple. I will be with you. Moses heroically decides to take up his cross because he believes God when God says that this impossible job will be about his, about God's life. I'm sorry. Because he believes God, when God says that this impossible job will not be about Moses' life, it will be about God's life, the great I am. So how does taking up its cross work out for Moses? Moses will become both ruler and liberator of the Israelites, performing signs and wonders as he leads God's chosen people out of Egypt only to then wander around in the desert for 40 years. 
Throughout the journey, the stubborn and rebellious Israelites will disobey Moses time after time. And in their hearts, they will turn back to Egypt. God will continue to speak directly to Moses. Moses will stand in the breach until he finally delivers the Israelites to the promised land. But it will not be Moses that will finish the journey. It will be Joshua. The Lord said to Moses, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. Maybe taking up his cross will work out better for Peter than it did for Moses. So let's move on to Peter and today's gospel reading. In Matthew, Jesus is preparing his followers for what taking up his cross will mean for him and for them. Jesus tells his followers that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day raised. Peter, now the rock of the church, rebukes the Lord, perhaps understanding that if this cross Jesus must bear, if this is the cross Jesus must bear, it is a cross Peter also may have to bear. Peter tells Jesus, this must never happen to you. Jesus catches Peter focusing on his own life, human things, rather than on Jesus and Jesus' life, divine things. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. Remember, this is the same Peter who in last week's gospel is the first to call out Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God, invoking a much different response to Peter than we just heard in today's gospel. Remember Jesus saying last week, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Back in today's gospel, Peter the rock has now become a stumbling block for Jesus, who truly has made a decision to take up his cross. So how does, the cro how does taking up his cross work out for Peter? Peter is a central figure in the Gospels. Not only was he the first to confess Jesus as Messiah, he was there on the mountain at the transfiguration to see the glory of God's kingdom shining out in Jesus and in Moses and Elijah, representing the law and the prophets. Peter has been to the mountaintop, as Moses was before him, to the mountaintop at Mount Nebo, perhaps 
even as Martin Luther King Jr. so eloquently sings out in his I've been to the mountaintop speech. In other, on the other hand, Peter will deny Jesus three times when asked if he even knew Jesus. A, bet a betrayal Jesus foretold at the Last Supper. Tradition maintains that Peter was martyred in Rome, crucified upside down, so as not to be equated with his master. As much as I love and honor Moses and Peter, I live in a different time and place than they did. Of course, I still dream of the Lord asking me to follow him on, in some grand way like he did Moses and Peter. But alas, he has not yet. In today's New Testament reading, though, I find words from the Apostle Paul that I have always known the Lord is calling me to follow as he asks me to take up my cross. Please allow me to paraphrase, paraphrase from Paul's letter to the Romans. Love genuinely. Hate evil. Hold fast to good. Love one another. Show others honor. Be enthusiastic, passionate. Serve, hope. Be patient. Persevere, especially in prayer. Be generous in giving hospitality. Bless everyone, especially those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony, especially with the lowly. Do not be haughty. And a direct quote from Paul. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. The New Revised Standard Version of the Bible labels these attributes as the marks of a true Christian. That reminds me of a quote I've heard from one of my favorite writers, Paula Darcy. God comes to us disguised as our life. Paul's words are real life words. They are a cross that even I can take up, like so many of you have already done. They are, but they are also words of the Spirit, divine not just words of the flesh, human. They are words that can only be lived in Christo, as Paul likes to say, in Christ. If you want to follow me, deny yourself and take up your cross. It's not about saving your life. It's about finding your life in me.
It's not about gaining even the whole world. It is about finding your life in me. Namaste. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 7 of your service bulletin and page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. I had just got it settled. The prayers of the people, Form 4, are on page 8 of the bulletin and page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our bless all those who bless all those lives who are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us Lord in your mercy Hear our prayer. we thank you Lord for all the blessings of this life and for those celebrating birthdays Connie, Connie Ween Miller. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation and for the victims of Hurricane Laura. We pray for Sandy, Linda, Hector, Terrence, Bob, Maggie, Val, Meredith, Ray, Ted, Hazel, Stan, and Ginny. And family and friends, Diana, Scott, Sarah, Emma, Rachel, Carolyn, Linda, Nancy, Kathy, Laney, Trey, and Bill. 
And we pray especially for teachers, first responders, our military personnel, health care workers, and others that we name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom, especially for the Reverend Jim Coleman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess, confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace.
Now let us pray in the words our Lord and Savior Christ taught us. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Page 364, the Book of Common Prayer, page 10 of your service bulletin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A spiritual communion is a, is a devotional that we can participate in at any time to express the desire to receive the Holy Communion. Current circumstances impede us from physically partaking of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The St. Richard's community is therefore fasting from the bread and the wine of the Eucharist and participating in spiritual communion with God and with each other. So let us pray. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar, which this community faithfully celebrated before our world changed. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into our hearts, we pray, as though you have already come. We embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Help us to know and feel that we are always connected to you and to each other across time and space. We pray this until we are reunited physically and can share in the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 379, hymnal 1982, God is Love, Let Heaven Adore Him, on page 11 of your service bulletin.
welcome to St. Richard's. This is our portion of the service when I make a few announcements. I want to thank the Flower Guild again and Tom Irish and Rich and Kathy Wilson who have dedicated the flower to flowers today for uh, Tom Irish's par parents, uh, V. Brown and Marjorie Irish, and in memory of Rich and Kathy Wilson's parents, Jackie and Dick Wi Jackie and Dick Wilson and Pete Prather, not Kathy's mother though, she's still alive. <laughs> God, God be with her today. Uh, thank you for those flower dedications. You too can dedicate flowers to your loved ones at St. Richard's. Just contact the church office and we'll make those arrangements. We do have outreach continuing at St. Richard's. Our Family Promise Host Week is September 20th through the 27th. Family Pro Promise is a wonderful program, uh, part of the Interfaith Hospitality Network, where we used to house people for a week at a time here at St. Richard's in our classroom spaces that were converted to bedrooms. Now Family Promise, during the pandemic, houses their families in hotel rooms, but the churches and uh, other worship centers who are involved in Family Promise continue to deliver food to them. There's an opportunity to volunteer. Please contact Kay Wolf and Melody Montgomery, our coordinators, and let them know which uh, day you could arrange to drop off bag dinners or send some, some uh, uh, food to go from your favorite restaurant. This evening, our special evening worship this fifth Sunday of August features Cindy Boer and friends. Um, who, has, who have put together a wonderful, beautiful prayer service that includes a lot of wonderful music with a piano, uh, a drum, the boron, a special Irish drum, a violin, and Cindy um, on vocals and guitar. In addition, we will feature Ken Shusha, who's one of our Flower Guild members, as the featured worship artist tonight who will be constructing a beautiful flower arrangement right here in the center of the altar as the prayer service is conducted. I urge you to uh, tune in for that evening worship tonight at 5 p.m. live on Facebook. They've worked hard rehearsing, and it, it should be a really wonderful, joyful, and interesting service to view. And then on September 13th, we are going to add in-person worship here at St. Richard's Church at 8 a.m. And instead of under the big oak tree off the parking lot, we've gotten enough pop-up tents to cover the grassy area in the Memorial Garden. So at 8 a.m. September 13th, uh, in the Memorial Garden here at St. Richard's Church, come and wear a mask, bring your chairs, and communion will be served. Please uh, refer to my e-news this past week for um, how exactly we're going to receive communion. I'll update you also over the next two weeks. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 